Hi, welcome back. Today we're back to the Saba Freiburg W2 from 1952 and uh, what I'll be doing today is uh, changing the selenium rectifier for a more modern diode bridge. This is a Siemens B250 C110 bridge rectifier. Um, the markings or the labeling gives us an indication of what its ratings are. It's uh, 250 volts, 110 milliamps, and uh, I'll be using a uh, 4 1N4007 UFs, uh, which are more than enough in terms of voltage and uh, current capacity to give us a great result. The voltage will be slightly higher than what we'd get from this selenium rectifier because Selenium rectifiers have a high input impedance and therefore a higher voltage drop in the conversion from AC to DC. This is what you get when you remove the two screws and desolder the connectors from it. You're left with the rectifier. Um, it's made of uh, aluminium, very soft, quite easy to work with, also quite easy to damage. So try and avoid any undue scratches and dents which are then difficult to remove and uh, make for an unsighty result. I use a screwdriver to gently pry up the edges and, and open up the casing so that we can get the parts separated to work with. And this is what you're left with when you've opened up both sides. This particular one has two rivets, they're brass, and they hold the panels together. Um, this is the first case where I've actually found the rivets. Usually you don't have them at all, but uh, using a drill bit, you can very carefully drill the rivets out, and you're good to go. The top plate then just slides out from the assembly, and what you're left with is the interior with these spring-loaded clips that hold the selenium plates in position. The clips come off and below that you'll find the selenium plates stacked together um, above the contacts to the assembly. These you remove and you're left with the bare assembly unit with the connection tabs for the various uh, solder points. And these are the selenium plates that um, I've removed. They just go in the garbage. Nothing more to do with them. And this is what you're left with. You've got your assembly. You've got those brass plates in place. They seem to be, uh, there seem to be five of them. There are actually four because the one on the right is one plate that goes below the plastic molding of the case. They're then wired to the solder tags on the right hand side. And this is what you've got. You've got the unpopulated casing at the top, top right. On the lower left is the bridge rectifier schematic that we want to recreate inside the casing. And on the bottom right is uh, a drawing of the pads as we have them inside the unit. The uh, bridge rectifier schematic is very simple. You've got the four diodes. The left and right connection is for the AC input. Top is positive, bottom is negative. The way I like to remember this is that the two diodes point to the positive and two diodes point away from the negative. Very simple. On the right, lower right, you have the pads drawn in. The way these are wired is uh, the one on the left is the positive. The two central ones are the AC input points. And the one on the right is the negative connector. These are connected to their respective solder points on the far right of the casing, as you can see there. If we draw the diode symbols in, as we've done there in orange, 
that is what we're trying to recreate inside the casing itself. You've got the right hand connector which is negative, you've got two diodes going off from there to the AC points which are in the middle, and then from those two AC points you've got two diodes going to the positive connector on the far left. It's uh, actually very convenient the way this is drawn up and laid out, it makes it a lot simpler. The next thing to do is to tin the brass connectors that you're going to solder the diodes to. These can be quite difficult to tin, so the best thing to do is actually to remove them, tin them outside, possibly use some flux, clean it with a bit of steel wool, and uh, the solder should adhere quite well. And this is what you get when the diodes are soldered in. They're soldered in place, check for connections, make sure that the solder joints are solid. You do not want to open this up later if you've made a mistake. At this point it's time to mount everything up again, put the various layers back in place and the lid, and then gently hammer the lid back into position so that you have a solid connection um, and uh, as little damage as possible. Just make sure that the holes line up. So you're about ready to go. What I like to do is to clean out the solder tags properly. I also uh, make a note on the back that uh, the selenium rectifier has been replaced with four diodes just so the next guy who perhaps comes and does a, a restoration in this and maybe 50, 60 years from now, who knows, will know that uh, the changes have been made. It's just uh, good practice. Right, final stage is just to wire it up and uh, screw it back onto the casing. Be very careful with the, the wires that you do wire up. Make sure you've got the, the right ones in place. And then um, what I want to do here is set the voltage input for 240 volts. As I mentioned earlier in earlier videos, my uh, mains wiring at home is 235, not 220. So I'll change it to 240 volts and then see what the result is. And here's the result. I get 262 volts out of the selenium, or rather the new bridge rectifier. I was getting a significant amount lower than that before. Um, I actually want 270, so this is not that far off. And I think I'll leave it here for now. I can always revert to the 220 volt input and uh, put a resistor in series to drop any excess voltage. But here comes another important uh, reading, and that is the heater voltage. With the 240 volts in, I now get closer to the 6.3 volts that um, I want for the for the heaters. Before I was getting close to 7, which was uh, almost 10%, I think it was actually 11% over the uh, rated amount. So I think I'll leave it here for now and call this a wrap. And uh, I think now I'm able to continue with the re remaining parts of restoration.